Whether or not the Antichrist is aware that he is the Antichrist is among the more intriguing questions. Does he understand his role in the end times? Or is he maybe preoccupied with his thoughts and lacks any interest in or understanding of biblical prophecy? Thankfully, the Bible provides us with some information regarding the Antichrist's identity. More accurately, it reveals the timing of the Antichrist's identity revelation. The Son of Perdition is one of the biblical titles for the Antichrist, and it provides insight into this idea. This is because the Bible only uses the name Son of Perdition for one other person, Judas Iscariot. Another similarity between the Antichrist and Judas is that both betrayed Israel and Christianity when they entered the Third Temple and professed to be God. Both of these offspring of perdition are traitors. Satan took possession of Judas, the first son of perdition, which was a crucial incident that led to his betrayal of Jesus. The Bible records two distinct instances in which this occurred. First, according to Luke 22-3, Judas was possessed by Satan right before he went to the chief priests to tell them he was ready to betray Jesus. Second, we learn from John 13, 27, that Satan appeared to Judas shortly after he accepted the bread at the Last Supper and shortly before his departure to help the top priests locate Jesus. Thus, it is evident that Judas' decision to go and betray Jesus was motivated by Satan's possession of him. Judas went out and completed the task after realizing what had to be done at that moment. Judas became the son of perdition by betraying Jesus. His deeds made him aware of who he had become. Later, when Judas found out that Jesus was about to be crucified, he murdered himself out of extreme regret. The Antichrist, often known as the second son of perdition, will also have his moment when he betrays Christianity and Israel. He will enter the Jewish Third Temple, breach his agreement with many, and declare himself to possess Godhood. This marks a turning point in biblical prophecy. That's what ushers in the last three and a half years of Antichrist's reign, complete with the appearance of the false prophet, phony miracles, the image that comes to life, and the beastly mark. Significantly, the Antichrist is allowed an additional 42 months to work. Who is the giver? Who gives the Antichrist his power? The Bible claims that although the Antichrist has immense power, it is not his own. Additionally, it states that Satan might precede him. When we combine these scriptures, we can see that Satan convinced Judas, the first son of perdition, to betray Jesus, to betray Israel, and Christianity. He will also possess the Antichrist, the second son of perdition, the Antichrist will become aware of who he is after betraying Israel and Christianity, much as Judas did after becoming possessed and realizing what he had done and who he had become by betraying Jesus. That's why it's likely that the man who presently resembles the Antichrist described in the Bible is unaware of or indifferent to the fact that he is the man of sin. Given that everything in his life is centered around himself, it's possible that he isn't even aware of the end times prophecy. However, the moment is drawing near when he will breach his numerous agreements. He is going to betray Christianity and Israel. He will declare himself to be God as he enters the third temple. He will be fully aware of who he is at that point. However, there is one distinction between these two sons of perdition. The Antichrist will declare himself to be God, whilst Judas eventually murdered himself out of extreme regret. He has 42 months to go, and in that time, he wants to take over the entire globe. Where did his evil originate from? If God is perfect, how did evil enter the world? Where did Satan's original wicked desire come from? As confirmed in John 1 verses 1 to 3, God created Satan through the ministry of his son Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God at the beginning. Through him, all things were made, and without him, Nothing was made that has been made. Every creature owes its existence to God. And nothing came into being without him. Importantly, all of God's creations were perfect at creation, including Lucifer, the devil. So how did imperfection and evil enter the world? How did humanity and even some angels become corrupted? How did Satan become evil? In this video, 
we will answer these questions. To understand Satan's fall from grace, listen to how the prophet Isaiah spoke of Satan's origin and downfall. You, the morning sun of the dawn, have been cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations of the world. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the highest, yet, in reality, you will be brought down the shield to the remote recesses of the pit. Ezekiel painted an even more amazing picture of Satan's perfect original state and his race to the abyss, saying of Satan, You were in the garden of God, adorned with every precious stone, ruby topaz diamond, diamond barrel, onyx sapphire, turquoise, and emerald, all skillfully crafted in settings and sockets. They were prepared on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covered and protected, and I placed you there on the holy mountain of. Your creation continued until unrighteousness and evil were discovered in you. The abundance of your trade caused you to be filled with lawlessness and violence. Thus, you were cast out as a profane and unworthy thing from the mountain of God. And I destroyed you as a covering cherub from among the stones of fire, Ezekiel 28, 13, 16. When Satan rebelled against God, he not only brought God's wrath upon himself, but he also persuaded a portion of the angels to join him in turning against God. Some estimates suggest that about one-third of the angels followed Satan in his rebellion. At this point, Satan and his angels have become truly malevolent and antagonistic towards God, his divine plan, and the human beings he created. The phrase perfection captures Satan's exceptional personal and moral qualities at creation. Beauty he possessed the seal of excellence, being perfect in beauty and blameless in his ways from the day of his creation. Like everything else God created Satan was flawless from the beginning both Isaiah and Ezekiel testify that he held the highest rank among all created beings in the universe. It is also clear that he had a special and close relationship with God. He resided on God's holy, which signifies the place of God's visible glory however without explicitly elucidating. Iniquity was discovered in this ostensibly perfect angel. How did this happen? The best clue can be found in Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 17 in which it says your heart was proud and arrogant because of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor there you have it due to Satan's prideful nature and self-obsession his wisdom was overshadowed he became infatuated with himself meditating on his own beauty rather than focusing on the glory of God this is what led to his downfall how revealing this highlights the dangers of pride and prejudice self-obsession to fully understand what Jesus meant Look at the context in which he made this revelation. It was on the occasion of the return of the 70 disciples, whom Jesus had sent out to evangelize and prepare the way to Jerusalem. Upon their return, they were filled with joy and perhaps personal pride, so they reported to Jesus saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to you. By remarking, how amazing it was to see Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Jesus' statements serve as a warning about the dangers of pride. He implies that being pleased with their authority over demons should not lead to excessive pride. Pride is a sin that can give rise to other sins, just as excessive hubris caused Lucifer's fall from grace and expulsion from heaven. The disciples should be cautious to avoid this potential hazard. As a result of this wrongdoing and rebellion, God dethroned Satan, and he was cast down from his privileged position. This is how Satan descended to earth after his original sin, and his punishment awaits him in the form of a lake of fire, as Christ mentioned in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. In spite of the fact that Satan was perfect when it came to creation, he brought evil into the world. As he developed pride and arrogance, he transformed the thing of beauty and perfection into sin and imperfection. He said, I will ascend to heaven, despite already having access to God's presence. Satan clearly aspired to be recognized on an equal level with God. God's stars, because the reference to stars represents angels, Satan desired to elevate his authority above that of other celestial beings. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly, which is associated with God's kingdom administration and messianic rule from Jerusalem. Satan's ambition extended to ruling over all affairs. I'm going to dress like the most powerful person. This remark reflects the climax of all his self-assertion and rebellion. 
It demonstrates his daring goal to be equal to God as a result of his rebellion induced by his vanity and self-absorption. The holiness he had got from his creator was gone, and corruption took its place. Although the precise period of Satan's fall is not clearly given in the Bible, we may estimate some time boundaries based on biblical evidence sometime after the fall. Although it is unclear whether Satan fell before or after the creation of mankind, it is clear that his fall occurred before Genesis chapter 3 where the temptation of Adam and Eve is recorded as Satan successfully deceiving and soliciting some angels to join him in his rebellion leading to their irreversible moral decay. After this seduction, there was no turning back for them and they were doomed. In his effort to hinder God's intentions, the serpent Satan swept away a third of the stars of heaven signifying the angels. It is critical to remember that the same Bible that records the origin and existence of evil also portrays God as completely righteous and perfect in all his ways. He views sin as exceedingly wicked and deserving of judgment, and God does not promote or perpetuate sin, as stated in James chapter 1 verse 13. Temptation is caused by our own defects, not by God. God is above temptation and does not tempt anybody, Understanding Satan's pride serves as a cautionary lesson for us, enabling us to avoid such pride in our own lives through the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. The next video talks about why Jesus called Moses and Elijah to the Mount of Transfiguration. Was Jesus in need of the dead prophet's help? Or was he about to wage war on hell? Watch the video now to find out. Thank you.